Hey everybody, welcome back to Drew the Catholic. I'm Drew the Catholic, and today's episode is titled, The Hail Mary, A Summary of the Faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. This is a prayer prayed daily by Catholics, universally and unceasingly. For the Catholic, the Hail Mary is as often on our lips as breath is in our lungs. And yet, if asked to explain why this prayer is so important, this can be a difficult thing. Perhaps we've always prayed it. Perhaps we don't struggle with the Marian dogmas and don't have any issue asking for the intercession of the Blessed Mother. And of course, Catholics don't have issues with such things. As a Protestant, however, the seeming super importance of the Hail Mary seemed strange to me. Okay, sure, I thought, Mary is the mother of God, she's ever virgin, and she might even be immaculately conceived, I thought. And it is okay to ask for the intercession of, intercession of saints, I, I get it. But why do we pray this so often? Why do Catholics pray this so often, I wondered. Along the road towards Catholicism, I began to soften my heart towards Mary and accept her as my mother. Now I'm devoted to her as a Catholic, and my experience of the mother's love softened and eventually dissolved my intellectual quandaries. Yet, I still often wondered when I first converted, why so often and why is this so important? I pondered this question for a long time after my decision to become Catholic, and I certainly didn't have a problem with praying the Hail Mary very often, but still... Wouldn't it have been easier to convince Protestants that I don't now worship Mary if I didn't pray to her almost unceasingly? I thought there must be something about this prayer that it's special, something deeper that I'm missing. One day recently, while praying the rosary, a sort of epiphany dawned on me. I had long studied the traditions of the church, especially the early church fathers, and before that journey, I had studied the scriptures, and it was those two things, in fact, that brought me home. And so this day, while clutching the beads of my rosary and praying, Hail Mary, I suddenly became acutely aware, all at once, where each and every one of those words came from, as if the whole story and all of its depth was laid out before me on a tapestry. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. That's from Luke chapter 1, verse 28. That's the Annunciation. And in the verses just after, verse 42, Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Of course, I was already aware these two lines came from the Gospel of Luke. But in that moment, I became aware at once of the deep meaning of them. For one, an angel visits an Israelite virgin and announces the coming of the Messiah. God has remembered his covenant. He's done it. He will bring victory to Israel as he promised. This is what they've been waiting for for thousands of years. And at the end of this passage, Mary's own song proves this. She says, He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Two, the angel calls Mary full of grace, or favored one. This woman is pure, as if she's dedicated uh, a temple vessel. This child is special. This woman is special. Three, blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Here, we hear another echo of the Old Testament, not just the awaited promises of the Old Testament, but the actual text of it. Elizabeth, like her forefather David, seeing the ark of her Lord, proclaims, why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? Just as David did in 2 Samuel 6, 9. How can the ark of the Lord come to me? For David, the ark remained in that place for three months. For Elizabeth, Mary remained with her for three months. Mary is the ark of the covenant, which, as we know, carries the presence of God. And we all know what this means. We know it. It means Jesus Christ, the babe in her womb, is God himself. Israel's promised Messiah is God himself come down from heaven incarnate as a man. Just as the glory of the Lord dwells in the temple, so now God dwells among us in Christ and in the church. And at this moment in the Bible, in the womb of Mary. You see, what we have in those two lines, the first two lines of the Hail Mary, are a summation 
of the whole gospel. And more than that, they come directly to us from sacred scripture, which is a pillar of truth in our faith. Okay, wow, that's a lot. So what about the last two lines? Holy Mary, Mother of God. I'll read to you a quote about this one. Therefore, because the Holy Virgin bore in the flesh God who was united hypostatically with the flesh, for that reason we call her Mother of God. That is the Council of Ephesus in 431 AD. The church defined dogmatically that Mary is the Theotokos, the God-bearer, the Mother of God. And why? Because at the moment of his conception, Christ is fully God and fully man in one hypostatic union. At no moment was the humanity of Christ separate from the divinity of Christ, and nor do they stain or change one another. Mary then in her womb, carried the divine Logos, the Son, the eternally begotten one who became man, Emmanuel, God among us. What about the last line? Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. In this, we see the communion of saints, the indivisible singular body of Christ, that is, his church, and an embodied act of charity from our mother to pray for us, her children, the very body of her son in his church, in our trials now and leading to our death. This is an embodiment of that line in the Apostles' Creed, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church and the communion of saints. These last two lines, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, encapsulate holy tradition and the magisterial authority of the church. Just as the first two lines of the Hail Mary come from the scriptures and sum up the story of the scriptures, the gospel itself, so these last two come from holy tradition and reveal to us the necessity of tradition and the magisterium. And so, laid before us in the Hail Mary is the content of the faith and the pillars of authority in the faith. And thus... The Hail Mary is the summation of the Catholic faith in its entirety. We hear the gospel, the fulfillment of God's promise to Israel in his Messiah, the divine son come to us by a virgin of the house of David to redeem the world. And we see the working of his apostles passing down apostolic tradition and authority so that by the councils, his incarnation, his gospel might be defended and protected for the benefit of generation after generation. We hear from scripture and tradition. So then, why do we pray this prayer so often? Why is it so important to Catholics? Because every time we pray the Hail Mary, we are praying and retelling the entirety of our Catholic faith. And so now, having meditated and, and ruminated and spoken on that, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>